Today on Carcass, we head out to a high-performance driving event that teaches anyone who's interested about going fast on a track. Then we start our own race car project. We hit the track and dyno to get some baseline numbers to see where we start. Alright guys, welcome to the brand new season of Carcass. I am in this bone stock Mazda Miata, and frankly a car that I don't really fit into all that well, but regardless of that, Jeremy and I are going to take this thing from its bone stock form and turn it into an absolute track weapon. And this is our little Honda Civic rally car that we built last season. Now this is kind of a real legitimate race car. It's fully caged. We've got some strut tower braces in here. We added a really nice set of coilover shocks. And at the time we put on some pretty beefy off-road tires, but we kind of set the car up a little bit differently. We lowered the stance to come out here and we put on a decent set of street tires. So we're here at NCM Motorsports Park at an event put on by Auto Interest and some racing. And what we're gonna do is learn how to be on a track safely and also learn how to drive. But it really doesn't matter if you bring something as healthy as our little Honda Civic here, which is a true race car, or if you bring a car like our Mazda Miata that pretty much just came right off of the street. If you don't know how to drive either one of these cars, it's really not going to do you any good. So Jimmy, let's go learn how to drive. Let's do it. Auto Interest is a high performance driving school program. Our main goal really was to get more people on track that had any kind of car that they wanted to do it with. Just decided that, okay, we should really formalize more of the learning and the curriculum, um, really be more purposeful about how we um, credential instructors. And once you've been through our program, you could go to nearly any high performance driving program. Um, and use those skills, they're, they're pretty universally applicable and it, it kind of opens up a whole new world of, of something really cool to do with your car. But before you can take some laps on the track, your car will have to go through tech inspection, but you don't have to worry about having a fully built race car, they have newcomers covered as well. For a first timer, it's just a car in uh, good mechanical condition, so fresh fluids, decent set of brake pads, decent set of tires. Uh, it doesn't have to be some crazy build, uh, so as long as it's in overall sound mechanical shape as a first timer, uh, you're not going to be going fast enough that you need a whole bunch of upgrades to your very first time. After tech, it's into the classroom for a little track driving 101. So we run basically three categories of people. We run a novice, broken into novice solo, which means you can go out on track by yourself without an instructor, and we run a first timer, and that goes with, along with our acclimation program where we just want you to learn about you know, the car and the track and the etiquette. From there, we'll teach everybody how to do the basics. But when you move up, we'll move you to intermediate. The intermediate guys get a little less attention that's one-on-one, -on -one, but we're always available to give that attention. If you want help on something, if you're sticking on a corner or something's wrong, just can't quite get that flow, we'll work with you. We'll jump in, we'll look at your data, we'll, we'll help you get faster. Because our real goal is to get you in the advanced class. Those guys, you know, might be some ex-racers, maybe guys that have done HPDE for a bunch of years. That's your real goal is to get to the advanced class. So my goal really is to make sure everybody's safe, make sure everybody has a good day, make sure the cars are safe, and then help everybody go as fast as they can. Grassroot programs like this aren't possible without great partners. Summit Racing has been with us for several years now. They've been a huge supporter of the program. They've just been a great partner, helping to market different events through channels they have. We really like that they connect directly in with our driving rewards program to reward drivers that uh, drive well and drive cleanly, that are safe. Um, and it's just been a huge boon to the program, um, really to, to help get a deeper engagement and, and that extra support behind it. All right, so we're in the car with Chief Instructor Rick Hoback. He's gonna teach us a few things, how to be safe on the track, most importantly, and then also if he can give us any tips to try to get around the track faster. We also need some help in that department too, so let's see what we got. So my car's already warmed up, but you typically wanna let your car warm up a little bit, get the brakes nice and warm, get the tires nice and warm. You just kinda come in here a little bit and just get everything up to temp. You don't wanna push too hard too early. So. Mentally, you want to prepare and you want to just kind of know your limits and, and what you're going to do 
So this is where this, the course starts. This is turn one, two, and right here. So we care about this apex, but we don't care about what's after it. We don't care about this corner here. We want to come out and fade out, back on the gas, nice and smooth. This is kind of a diamond. What I do here is I kind of fade in, aim for the middle, turn sharp, let it rotate. Be patient, patient, back on the gas. A little bit of rumble. Patience there is gonna pay a lot of dividends. Cars really don't wanna do multiple things at once. They don't wanna accelerate and turn or brake and turn. If I, if I tap the brake, like I'll do it here, and it'll wanna tweak the rear end. So if I go for the brake, it doesn't really like that much and it wants to rotate the rear around. So you just want to kind of accelerate and decelerate and turn separately. Very smooth. Your feet are really smooth. You don't want to jump on the gas. You don't want to jump on the brake. You know, you just want to squeeze things. Sometimes it seems like you're ripping it. You're not, you're just squeezing. Yeah. Some cars might carry a different line, a higher horsepower car. You know, it might go a little farther from the edge of the course of the apex when he comes out or when he comes in. Little Miatas tend to run real tight lines. You'll never master, there's no perfect lap ever. You can always do something a little better, a little better. So you don't need to bring your Corvette, your Porsche, your Mustang. You just need something simple that teaches you the basics and, and you go fast. And there's the checker flag. I don't know if you caught it out of the corner of your eye. Well, thanks for having us. And uh, I think we need to get on the track then, right? Yeah, this is uh, a lot of fun. And I can't really wait to get out there and see what we can do. Up next, we hit the track to get some seat time and test out our new project. Hey guys, welcome back to Carcass. Now we're up here at NCM Motorsports Park. We're with the Auto Interest Group. We just did our classroom time and we did a couple hot laps with Rick Hoback. Now it's time to hop in our cars. Yeah, I'm gonna be in the Honda and you take the Miata. I'll Let's take rip this it. one. I'm out here with our Honda Civic Rally car and with a few suspension adjustments and new tires, I'm trying to apply some of Rick's advice and have some fun. If you guys haven't noticed by now, I'm in a 2000 Mazda Miata. Now the reason we bought this car is while we had so much fun with our little Honda Rally Civic and our OBS truck, we thought, you know what, why not build another race car? And why not build a race car that's extremely popular? Now, the difference between this car and our other two builds, like the Honda and the truck, this is gonna be a spec Miata. And what that entails is, when you go into a spec class, as it be a Miata or something else, it comes down to more or less the driver. Everybody's got the same resources, and you're limited to what you can do as far as upgrades go. So you can only run specific tires. You can only run specific brakes. You're limited on engine upgrades and exhaust and stuff like that. So in a spec class, it comes down to the person sitting in the driver's seat. So hence why we're here with the Auto Interest Group and they're trying to teach us how to drive a little bit better. And once you're comfortable in your car, then you get faster. The more you understand your car, the faster you get. So, with our little Miata here, we got a bunch of upgrades that we want to do within the rules of the spec Miata class. And sticking with everybody else in the group, we're gonna try to build ourselves a little race car. And not spin out. <laughs> this little Miata is an absolute blast to drive, especially out here on a racetrack in completely stock form. Yeah, it makes a couple noises like that. I just got tire rubbing. But the reality is, for the four cylinder five speed, this thing's like a rocket ship. This entire build, we're gonna be doing with Summit Racing. They're really gonna help us out here to put this car together because we have to follow specific rules set in the spec class. Everything that we can get for this car, we can get from Summit Racing. So we are gonna put this little spec Miata together and have a whole bunch of fun with it. We had a ton of fun out here today at NCM Motorsports Park with the Auto Interest Group. We learned a lot, had some ride-alongs, and I think we can be pretty safe on a track. Yeah, and I got a really good baseline on how the Miata acts out there on the racetrack, but now it's time to take it back to the shop and turn this thing into a true race car. Yep, I got the Honda loaded up. I gotta strap it down still, but I'll meet you there. Yeah, I get to drive this one back. Yeah. 
We now know how she handles on the track, but how many horses does she pack? Holy moly! <laughs> wow. We're all wrong. Dang. Hey guys, welcome back to Carcass. Well, we didn't waste any time. We've got our little Mazda Miata down here in engine power and it's strapped down to the chassis dyno. We also ran it around at NCM for a little bit, but right now we want to know how much horsepower this little four cylinder is going to make. And in the spec Miata class, there's not a whole lot we can do in terms of engine mods. So we just wanted to get a baseline to compare it to once we get everything done. So from here, we'll get a couple poles, figure out some horsepower. We've got some things we're going to do here coming up. Then we're going to bring it right back and check to see if we gained any, really. So it's Did you bring the stuff. key to wind it up first? Because I want to make full power with this then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it came with two sets of keys. So we used both of them, wound them up. So. Are these the four cylinders that were missing out of your Honda? I know that only had four. <laughs> You've got two cars here yeah. totaling eight cylinders at this point. So. Yeah. Right. Well, we're, we're looking to make half horsepower now and half horsepower later. So that's kind of why we In got In all four seriousness, four. these are pretty cool. These are a lot of fun for the money. They really are. And you have a spec Miata class, obviously, that's going to be pretty fun to run in because it sounds like everything's pretty equal for what you can do to it and what you have to do to, to race. Yep. It really comes down to the driver and like great way to increase your skills. So What's it going to make? Uh, 120. Ooh, yeah. What, what I, I'm going Hondo? Hondo. Okay, one Hondo. I'm mm -hmm. going to go 110. Uh, 112. I'll split so the difference. You're just going to be right in the middle. Well, I, I, I think we're all pretty close. Happens. All right. All right. Heck Light yeah. this thing. It runs actually yeah. very nice. I don't know the first time I've ever been in a chassis dyno session with a Miata. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Green button go. Okay, so oh. <laughs> I said 100. What was your guess? 120. Dang, 121. No way. Is that what it came up at? Yeah. 121? Yeah. Dude, I was 20 horse off. 119 pound feet. I was way off too. Well, now wow. we know, right? Now you, you can time that pole with a sundial. Yeah, 99 <laughs> miles an hour. You can just. That, that, that's, almost, that's, barely that's almost 100 miles an hour. You had a wheel speed of 99.59. Dude, this thing was an animal on the track. It did like 80 down the front. The pull is nice and smooth. There's yeah. no sign of anything going goofy. Back it up, make okay, another we'll one. So Break one's off. a fluke. First gear. Here we go. Ah, yes, yeah, so he's getting a little you aggressive. Know, yeah. right now. now I'm comfortable. Now I can go a little faster. Stab it. <laughs> oh my god. That'll probably print the same number. Yeah. I revved it the exact same, so. Yep. Yep. Dead on. 121 horse, and this is within one pound feet on, on, <laughs> on torque, so. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking it's making 121 horsepower then. Yeah. That's, Pretty that's, nice. That's, that's good. Yeah. It's consistent, I mean, uh, too. Uh, what, was, what was your Honda first initial uh, pulls? 89. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah. Just, just crushing that one. Yeah. Yeah, right. These are these are really neat little cars, you know, to 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 be honest. They're you know, they have a short wheelbase, they handle well. Decent power power to weight ratio is pretty decent in these things. Yeah, it was a blast to drive up at NCM. Um, and again, we gotta stick with that spec Miata stuff. So we can only do certain things to it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take it back down, do those things right now. If you guys are cool, we're gonna come right okay. back after we're done. Heck yeah. We we'll see what we gain for horsepower, because that's really all we can do. Yeah, okay. squeeze everything we can yeah. out of it. No, okay. I'm interested to see what it's going to make when you guys come back. Yeah. yeah, you're doing just easy stuff to it. Easy stuff. Um, cold air intake or filter Yeah, you can do intake some stuff. intake stuff. You can uh, change the exhaust, and you can adjust, I believe, initial timing. OK, and you guys have a way of doing that. Yeah, uh, we're going to try to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure everything out. OK, OK. I'm sure there's some tricks to sure. uh, this. And these guys that have done this for a long time, they know everything, so. OK, uh, well, nice. yeah. hey, you got your work cut out for you. so. Uh, Get her down and get her back. Yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. get her unstrapped, head down. We should be back a mm, couple hours. Couple hours. Okay. All Sounds right. good. We had a few simple upgrades to get a boost in power. That simple. All right, guys. Well, we're back down in our shop with the little Miata here, and we've got some base horsepower numbers. And now it's time to squeeze just a little more out of this thing. 
And one thing to note that in the Spec Miata rules, there are a couple different years you can run and a couple different engine options. You can either have the 1.6 liter or the 1.8 liter, and we have the 1.8. The caveat to all of this is if you do run the bigger engine, you have to run a restrictor plate. Now, regardless of engine size, it's really important to squeeze as much horsepower as you can just to give yourself the competitive edge. And so when we go back to the dyno, we won't run the restrictor plate just to get an apples to apples comparison on horsepower. And per spec rules and the fact that we have the 1.8 liter, we can only do a couple things. So we're gonna do a little bit of exhaust work. We're gonna bump the timing up just a little bit and we can switch out the air filter. So let's get this thing on the hoist and we'll start on the exhaust. Yep. Get this little shoe box up here. Our exhaust system is pretty simple here. There's only a few things we can do. One of them being replacing the muffler in the back. We got one from Summit Racing that we'll install in a little bit. Otherwise, we can replace this whole section here catalytic converter and this other tiny little muffler here with a straight section of pipe. The only thing to note here is that if you still want to drive your car on the street, not a good idea to take the cat out. We're going to take it out, but this is a track only car, so we don't have to worry about it. Bees nest. Yeah. I got it. All right. Before we start fitting up our new pipe, we'll grind the ends and clean them up. All right, so the rules say that the maximum tube diameter you can use for this section is two and a quarter. We have all kinds of bits and pieces laying around the shop, so this piece should work. I will have to do some trimming, but one way or another, we're gonna get it in there. I've got this main pipe pretty well fitted. Something to note here is that on the back part of this exhaust, this tube is closer to two inches. So I have a little reducer here to put in it. I just gotta get Jeremy's help and I'll start tacking these pieces in. With our exhaust tacked in, we'll take it out and head over to the welding table where we'll clean up the edges and finish welding it up. All right, with Jimmy welding up the exhaust, now we can replace the stock muffler with this performance one that we got from Summit Racing. Pretty simple to install. We're just gonna slide the old one out, slide the new one in. We'll spray our exhaust hangers down with a little Berryman Products Easy Does It to help our muffler slide right out. There it goes. This one just literally slides right into place. Man, that simple. Now we can install our new exhaust and tighten it down. All right, that wraps up the exhaust. Now we'll head to the front and adjust the timing. So the only way to adjust the timing per the spec rules is to do a little mod here to the crankshaft position sensor. I just have to pull this out. We elongate the mounting hole, put it right back in there, check our timing. All right, we'll snake this out of here. You might as well just do the mod to a new sensor and just replace this one anyways. So the idea here is we're going to file out the bottom side of the mounting hole. That's going to allow our crank sensor to move up. What you guys are doing is they're taking out about two and a half millimeters or about 60 thousandths. That'll give us the advance that we're looking for. That should do it. Now we'll just put the new one back up and in here. Put the bolt in it. Tighten it down. And we'll check our timing. Move that up. And we'll just tighten it down. And here we'll go up top. Check the timing. Ready? Yeah, you pop the hood. I'll put the timing light on it. You hop in the car, crank it up. Let's see what we're at for timing here. All right, Jimmy, fire this thing up. Check the timing quick. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's right around 14, so that should be good enough for now. I think the last thing we'll do is we'll throw the air filter in it, then we'll just get it off the hoist. And we'll run it down to engine power and see what it makes for power again. All right, all righty. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All Let's right. See how many bumblebees this thing picked up. <laughs> bumblebees? I like that, actually. I think it's it sounds pretty good. That's what I think it sounds like. But. Definitely a different tone. Yeah. <laughs> he's try I think he's trying to get it to 7,000. I think so. He likes seven grand. He's he definitely like up above. Oh! Oh, it we keeps getting better. Horse. 126.2 <laughs> no no and 123.6 pound feet. We are literally celebrating that. Did you see that? How we yeah. all went? Yeah, Woo! that's five horsepower. And you went 113 mile an hour. Well, in a class that competitive, that could make it you winning or you losing. I think for what we put into it and our five horsepower gain, I think that's way worth it. Solid improvement. Yeah, yeah for what you guys did, it's that's easy horsepower, so. Yeah, totally. Sure. I think that pretty much wraps it up for us, though. So if you guys like anything you've seen on the show today, why don't you go to PowerNationTV.com, and the four of us are going to unstrap this thing, and uh, Jimmy and I are going to take it out of here. I, I, I think you're going to help, aren't you? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take this thing off right here. <laughs> Today on Carcass, we start tearing into the interior of our spec Miata race car, getting ready to install the new racing seat. Then we build a custom roll cage to keep us safe when we're out on the track. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass. Well, as you can see, we got the Miata up here on our wheel stands, and it's time to start transitioning this thing from the daily driver that it is into the spec Miata race car that we want it to be. And the last time you guys saw this, we had a little bit of fun on the racetrack, and then we ran it down to engine power and got a base horsepower number. We managed to throw a couple little things at it and gain about five horse, which could be the difference between winning and losing. In a class as tight as spec Miata, that's a huge deal. Now the first thing we're going to do to turn this thing into a race car is mount a racing seat and then build a roll cage around it. And as far as research goes and for how tall we are, we're thinking we're going to have to mount the seat to the floor pan itself and as far back in the car as possible. And we do have a rule book on hand because some of the interior panels we will need to keep in the car and we don't want to throw anything away that we'll need. So otherwise, let's just get this thing apart. Right, right. These are really light. A whole lot to them. Removing the interior is pretty straightforward. We just need to get everything out of the way to make room for our roll cage. Won't be needing that anymore. Get these disconnected somehow. Get the radio out of the way here. Couple connectors underneath here to do. And there's one up here for the heater vent. I'm just gonna pull that off. Push this clip, pull this back, pull it up there. There's that one. I'll clip these two guys. And we'll go over to the driver's side. We'll get the horn out of here and the airbag too. Out. 
Alright, we can just get rid of this completely. I'll get the cluster out of it. This out of here. Alright, get the dash out. We'll keep moving on. Look at that. There it goes. And then all we got left is the antenna. Shazam, I'll take it. Cool. That was simple enough. Yeah, it's pretty easy. All right, got a couple more things to do on the interior here. We're gonna go ahead and pull the convertible top off. Then we're gonna come down here and drill out these seat risers. But first, we'll start right here with the top. And get inside this thing and take out a couple bolts. Jimmy, you want to give me a hand here? Get this thing out of here somehow. Maybe. If you guys are taller, maybe a good idea to remove these stock seat brackets. What that's going to allow you to do, slide your seat further back and get it sitting a little closer to the ground and make this tiny car a little more comfortable to drive. After center punching our holes, we'll use our Matco tool spot weld cutter. And first, we'll just apply light pressure as we start to cut. And then once we get a hole, we'll bear down on it and get rid of the weld. Coming up, we mock up and build mounts for our new seat, and then start building the backbone of our new roll cage. Well, now that we have the interior out of the spec Miata, we're gonna go ahead and start building the roll cage and mounting up this Kirky racing seat that we got from Summit Racing. Now, Jimmy and I have already set it in here, so we have a base idea where it's gotta go. So I'm gonna have him build the front part of the mount here, and I'll go ahead and take care of the back because that just bolts directly to the floor pan. Then once it's installed, we'll go ahead and start bending some tube and build the roll cage. Well, it looks like about five inches. Using a piece of cardboard, we'll do a quick layout of the design and cut it out. Push work. Jimmy, this is the front bracket for the seats. Can okay. you whip two of those out? One's gotta be bent one way, one's gotta be bent the opposite way. Yep. And then I'll mount the back. Got it. While Jimmy's making the brackets for the front of the seat, I went ahead and drilled the holes to mount the rear of the seat. Now we're also gonna be adding these little spacers. They're gonna bring the seat up just a little bit and it's gonna help disperse the load so the bolt doesn't pull right through the floor. All right, now we'll mount the seat. Here you go. Perfect. Two brackets. Mark these. We'll get the seat installed then. All right. Get the seat out of here, drill some holes, and reinstall it and be done. We've got the seat installed in the car now so I can start working on the cage and in most cases that starts with the main hoop so I'm going to take some measurements at the car, cut and bend this tube and we'll get it in. To make the main hoop I find it a lot easier to measure from the center of the car out so what I'm doing with the string here is I tied one side to a bolt that's in the center of the dash and there's a stud on this side that fixed the convertible top to the car, and this is also in the center. So once I get this string in here, I can take our cheater tube, 
place it where our main hoop is going to land and then I can measure from the center out to our bend line and then I can calculate the total length of tube we're going to use. So I just got to get this on here and we'll start measuring. All right, so all we're doing right now, Jeremy's gonna help me with this. We're just gonna measure for the center portion of the main hoop. This is obviously way too low for the main hoop, but after we can take a height measurement and then total up for the length of the main hoop. That's about 17. 17? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then, and from before we took a measurement for the total height of the main hoop from the package tray, so we kind of know where we're gonna land to stay under the top. The top. Yeah. So on what that you mark, at? you landed about 20 and three quarter, 21, somewhere 21. Right. Yeah. 21 times two, 17 times, times two, two, and then seven and a half times two. Radius. So write all that down so you don't forget. Yeah. 91 inches. on the dot. All right, let's see how we did. Yep, lands dead center in each pad, so that's pretty good. We'll tack it in, and then we can get to the rest of the roll cage. Don't go away. The assembly of our Spec Miata roll cage takes shape with some added custom touches. I've got the main hoop in with a couple down braces and I can start moving forward. The next thing I'm going to do is work on the harness bar and the diagonal brace for the main hoop. And something to note here that's very common with these cars is that the harness bar will actually go out behind the plane of the main hoop to make sure there's enough room to install the harnesses correctly. It's nothing too crazy, but it will take some small adjustments and trimming to make sure the joints are good on both sides. I'm just gonna take a basic measurement here to get an idea of how long it will be. And I'll give myself some extra just to make sure. We're looking at about four feet, but I'll probably cut it at five, and that's where we'll start. So we've got the first bend and notch in the harness bar. And so now obviously you can see that it sits way behind the main hoop. So I've got two more bends in it, one to bring it back in plane and then another bend to straighten it out. All right, everything looks parallel. All right, let's see. I bet it fits perfectly. Where are you at, there -ish? Yeah, just above the seat belt yeah. mount. Yeah, it seems about right. All right, uh, let me get my helmet and we'll tack it in. Okay, I'll hold it. Flat, flat foot. All right, installed. Cross brace, somewhere there. Eight and 15, 28, 15. 
All right, now before we actually tack in these diagonal brace pieces, I do have to fully weld this portion of this joint because this tube will cover it. We wanna make sure that we get a full weld around every tube. And then once we do that and get these pieces tacked in, we're actually gonna take this whole main hoop assembly all the way out, put it on the table and fully weld all these joints. It looks pretty. Yeah, should fit pretty nice. I hope so. Otherwise you gotta do it all over again. Yeah. You want it all the way to the leading edge, right? Yes. Yeah, that'll work. All right, just tack it in. Yeah, I'll hold it. All right, we've got the back half of our cage installed, so now we can keep moving forward and work on the front. At a basic level, building roll cages comes down to cutting, notching, and welding. Building roll cages for off-road stuff is pretty subjective, but building roll cages for race cars like this that compete in a specific class, you have to make sure that you follow any rules specified in the rule book. Perfect. Dude, that cage looks great. Thanks. Um, got a couple more things to weld up and then get the harnesses in it. We'll be ready to move on. Yeah, you go ahead and slam them in. Uh, we'll get it off of these uh, blocks here and then over on the hoist and keep rolling. Yeah. We'll take the next steps, turning our Mazda into a Track Titan. We've got the cage all wrapped up in the car and the only thing left to do is paint it along with the rest of the interior and now we're ready to move on with the rest of the car. So the idea from here is to follow the spec rule book and turn our stock daily driver into a competitive track car. Now we already went ahead and bumped up the timing and we swapped out the exhaust. Then we stripped the interior, added a roll cage and racing seat to make sure we were safe. So now the plan from here is to remove the subframe and trans to upgrade our clutch. With the subframe out, we'll tackle the suspension with a new set of struts and springs, plus throw in a bigger set of sway bars. To slow down in the corners, we'll upgrade the brakes with a bigger set of pads and rotors, and then top them off with a custom set of wheels and track-specific tires. At the end, we'll wrap the whole thing up by taking care of the faded out paint and do an easy color change to give it a fresh look. So the next thing we're gonna tackle is getting out the engine, the transmission, and the subframe. That way it's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier when it comes time to doing the clutch, the suspension, and the brakes. Stripping down the top side of the engine is pretty easy. Just a couple electrical connections, disconnect some hoses, and get rid of some fluids. Let's see if I can do this without making a huge mess, but no guarantees. It's a lot of coolant. Slower's faster in this game. I don't want to have to mop up. Nice. I'll take that. Cool, that'll work. Now we'll go up top. Nice. Ooh, make 
making a mess. We'll have to disconnect the steering as well. Easy. And the heater core hoses. Next are the wheels and tires, followed by the calipers. And since we're gonna reuse these, we'll hang these up. All right guys, so what exactly are we doing? Well, up underneath the Miata here is the subframe, or they also call it a cradle. Now what that does is it holds the engine transmission and the front suspension in the car. And then what they do is they just bolt this whole thing up into the body of the car. So what we're gonna do is take this all down and set it on a set of jack stands with the engine transmission and front suspension in place. That's just gonna make it a whole lot easier to work on everything. They're pretty simple to get out, just a series of bolts. So we'll get these bolts out of here, set up some jack stands, get this thing on the ground. Okay, so now we're gonna pull the subframe out, but all we're gonna do is just loosen the bolts a little bit, and then we're gonna set this thing down on the ground on a set of jack stands, then we'll come back, take the bolts out the rest of the way, and pick the car up. All right, Jimmy, you want to watch that side so we don't yeah. catch anything? I think, I think we're clear. I don't know if I forgot anything. Yeah. I don't see anything hanging, so. That's pretty simple. Yeah, that's cool. That's definitely the way to do it, drop everything yeah, it's clean out. pretty easy. You know, even if you don't have a hoist, you can still do it that way. I mean, it's a little easier for us. We get to pick it up, but yeah, you can still take the cradles out from underneath it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, guys find interesting ways to get the bodies up off top of them. So. Yeah, just like researching what everyone else did, that's how we figured this out. Right. You know? right. So, yeah, that's a simple way to do that. Yeah. If you like anything you've seen on today's show, be sure to check out more of Power Nation TV. Today on Carcass, we keep working on our Spec Miata race car, beefing up the subframe. We'll install a sportier clutch to handle the track abuse and add some new struts, giving our Mazda a true coilover setup. Then we'll help it stop faster with some performance goodies for the turns. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass, where our little spec Miata is really starting to take shape and we've already managed to strip the entire interior and add a roll cage. And as you can see, we have the engine transmission and subframe out of the car because there's a couple of things that we want to tackle. Yes, yeah, so while we have everything out of here, we're going to take care of the suspension and brake system. We'll take the engine and transmission out and put a new clutch in it. And then while the subframe is bare, we will add some reinforcements to solve a common problem among Miata race cars. And then at the end, we're just going to toss this back up underneath the car, get some wheels and tires on it, set it on the ground. We'll be one step closer to making this thing hit the track. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Engine and transmission? Yeah, we'll get this all out of here. I'll go get the cherry picker or the forklift. That's probably easier. Yeah. A little more, stop. Okay, 
kind of jammed in there a little bit. Um, you know, like a pry bar or something? Maybe. Just waiting for him to get tools. Never prepared, Jimmy. Never prepared. Why wouldn't it just come out easy? Well, that's what I would assume as well. There. There you go. You all right? Yeah, don't uh, step under heavy things. Right. All right. You good? Yeah. How's this side? Because it looks like it's still engaged. Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, we got it. Oh, got a hose that came up. That's probably enough, huh? Yeah, that's good. Grab the connector for the oxygen sensor on this side. So I'll tear that off. All right. Ready? Backing up. Exhaust okay? Yeah. Well, that's simple. lighter. No engine, no trains on it. That's yeah. way easier. We'll flip it over. Which way? This way? Yeah. There cool. A lot simpler to work on, right? Yeah. Just clean up a little bit. We'll be good. Something that's really common with Miatas that are driven very, very hard is that the subframe will crack where the lower control arm mounting bracket is welded to the subframe. This sharp corner in here is a stress riser, so over time when the subframe has seen millions and millions of loading cycles, the steel will fatigue and then it'll crack. To mitigate that issue before it happens, we have these subframe reinforcements that will weld in. These are very common to use with guys that do HPDE or actually race in spec Miata. So I just have to prep the subframe, weld it, and then we'll move on. To get the subframe reinforcements in, I'll start by grinding the paint off. Tacking the reinforcements to make sure everything is lined up and final welded in. All right, so we got everything welded in. We won't have to worry about our subframe cracking. This thing's gonna be nice and strong for us on the track, and now I'll just protect it with a coat of paint. All right, this thing's all wrapped up. We'll just wait for it to dry, and then this will be ready for brake and suspension work. Coming up, we give our transmission a little pep with a new clutch setup. All right, guys, well, Jimmy's worked his magic on the subframe. He's welded the reinforcements in, and now it's time to move on to the engine, transmission, and the clutch setup. Now, this is gonna be a race car for the rest of its life, so it's a good idea to do some maintenance issues like this. It's pretty simple to get to. All we gotta do is take out a couple of bolts, and then we'll get rid of the clutch, the flywheel, and we'll do something with the pressure plate as well. Before we take off the transmission, we'll have to remove the starter, followed by the slave cylinder. Get the transmission off of here. Pretty small, pretty light thing. Simple enough. Get it out of the way. Pretty dirty though. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell this, but this clutch setup looks pretty much brand new. 
Now, we weren't told that when we bought the car, but it doesn't matter anyways, because per spec rules, we can actually run a performance style clutch. So we were just gonna end up replacing this one anyways. So the clutch that we're gonna be running is an ACT clutch that we got from Summit Racing. Now in the spec rule book, they actually give you the part number for this specific clutch. It's got a six pad racing disc, comes with a pressure plate, the pilot bearing, throwout bearing, and the alignment tool. And where we're gonna get started is we have to get the old pilot bearing out and install the new one. Easy way to do this, just slide the bearing in, use a socket that's about the same diameter as the outside. And just give her some taps and get it in there. That'll work. All right, now before we install the clutch and the pressure plate, it's a good idea to either have your flywheel machined or turned down. But in our case, since this whole setup was new anyways, you can actually still feel the grooves or the machining grooves that are in the flywheel here, so we know it's in really good shape. All I'm gonna do is use a little bit of solvent and we'll just wipe it down, put the clutch and the pressure plate on it. Now we'll grease up the threads here just a little bit, put her together, it goes smoothly. And then we can throw everything together. Get my hands clean too. Make sure and add just a bit of thread locker to these before we hammer them down. Jimmy, why do seagulls live by the sea? Because they're not bagels. Dang it, he knew it! It's terrible. Because if they lived by the bay, they'd be called bagels. Come on, man, that's look. funny. Yeah, I've heard that about 7,000 times. Well, 7,001 is good, too. Yeah. All right, the last thing we need to do is replace the throwout bearing inside the bell housing here, but it's pretty filthy. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up. We'll get the new throwout bearing in it, and then we'll just put the whole assembly back together. Filthy dirty in here. But this was a good idea. Let's get this on the table and we'll get the new bearing in. These are simple to install. Just pop out the old one and slide the new one on. All right, let's get this transmission back on here. And we'll just keep rocking and rolling. All right, the last thing we're gonna do before we set this thing back in the cradle is we'll go ahead and replace the old motor mounts. It's just one more thing we can do for maintenance. All right, well, get this old mount off of here. It's pretty simple. It's got a little locking pin down there. Let's put the new one on, set that locking pin in the place there a little bit. We use the old nut that goes on there. Tighten this one down and then get this back on the motor. 
be one step closer to getting this back in the subframe. And then from here, we'll start working on the suspension and the brakes. We take our Miata suspension to the next level, adding new coilovers. Jeremy's got the new clutch installed and I'm ready to keep moving forward with the suspension. I do need a couple pieces from the old struts, so I'm going to take those off and then we'll get all the new stuff installed on the subframe. When you're using a spring compressor like this, or any spring compressor for that matter, it's best to stand off to the side just in case something happens and it'll decrease your chances of getting hit. We only need the top hat from the strut, so I'll take these two nuts off and the hat will just slide off. With the hat off the old strut, we can start assembling the new ones. They consist of a damper from Bill Stein and a spring from Eibach, both of which we got from Summit Racing, and the part numbers are in the Spec Miata rulebook, so it's all really easy to find. And we also have the accompanying hardware to put it together. That's it. To finish this thing off, we're going with a pad and rotor combo by Hawk Performance. These are going to deal with the heat quite a bit better in a track scenario, and it's just going to help us stop faster. All right, and then last thing, just gonna clean the surface real quick with some brake clean. All right, so Jimmy's got the front all buttoned up, and in the rear, it's pretty much the exact same thing. We'll get the pads and the rotors out of the way, get rid of that old strut, and we'll replace it with all the new stuff. Find some way to pry there. Get this thing off here. It's really seized up. All right. There's a fun little fact about the rotors here. So there is a couple of holes here on the face of the rotor, but one of those holes is actually threaded. That's made for. So you guys put a bolt into that hole and you grab your impact. And what that does is it pushes force on the hub and it releases the rotor from the hub. Just like that. All right, now we'll just go ahead and pull the bolts and get the strut out of here. There. With the bottom bolt removed, we'll head up top. We'll just use this big bar here to get the strut out. I gotta kinda push everybody down. We will wobble it up. There it goes. There it goes. We'll go switch this out just like Jimmy's. Try to weasel this in here. All right, that buttons up the suspension. Just gotta throw the brakes on this thing, and then we'll get the engine and subframe back in this car. We'll finish it off with some sway bars. Up next, we add the final touches to our suspension and reinstall our stronger subframe. 
you know, these coilovers look pretty darn nice. Yeah, this thing looks good. Yeah. All right, so we've got all the new suspension components and brake components on the subframe. So now we're ready to put the engine back in here and get it up under the car. And before we get this thing fully assembled, we'll go ahead and take care of the sway bars because they're easy to get to. I'll go get the forklift and uh, we'll get all this bolted up underneath here. And then at the very end, we'll make it a roller. Yep, perfect. We're replacing our old sway bar with a bigger one from Eibach that we got from Summit Racing. Tell me when I can go forward. Keep going up. All right, let's go. All right. Stop right there. Start going down a little bit. Keep going. Stop. Power steering holes. Shimmy, shimmy some stuff around here. Okay. Go down very slow. Very slow. Stop. Okay. You gotta engage those like studs one yeah. side, then the next. All right, go down. Going slowly, give me a second. That's good, right there. You in? Yeah, perfect. Put the nuts on it. How's that look? Yep. All right. Gotta help you quick. Center the engine off of the Miata symbol on the bumper. I don't know if it's right, but that's what I'm gonna do. What do you think? Yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. Figure, um, figure something out. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. We'll uh, come forward a little bit. Keep coming. A little more. A little more. Nice. It's <laughs> just like eking on the thing. All right. Uh, I'm gonna lower it down, then we'll get the jack stands closed. All right. Slowly going down. Like that? That'll work? Backing up. Good? Yeah. Yep. Love the enthusiasm. Make this easier on ourselves. We're gonna use a plumb bob. We'll drop this down and see how close we are. I say that's pretty close. Put it together. Here we go. It'll take a while, but I've got about an inch until the strut engages. All right, I think that pretty much buttons this whole thing up. Let's get the wheels and tires back on this, and we'll get it down to the prep booth. Start taking care of this faded out paint, this crummy clear coat. Yeah, we'll make it look good. Yeah, get some parts to get back on here, though, and then we'll get the tires and the wheels on it. Make a pile of parts go down a little bit. If you like anything you've seen on today's show, go to PowerNationTV.com. Today on Carcass, our spec Miata has a few things left before we head out to the races. We show you some quick tips on how to get rid of peeling clear coat and then prep and paint our Mazda. 
we take care of a little fabrication on the door panels and add some new rubber made for the course. Then it's track time. We hammer down on the course to see if we can shave any time off our laps. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass. We've come a long way on our spec Miata, put a roll cage and seat in it, did some engine work, clutch, suspension, and brakes, and now we're ready to change the look. So we're headed down to the paint and the prep booth. We're gonna show you guys a couple tips and tricks on how to get your car ready for paint. We'll go ahead and take care of this faded out clear coat too. So tight. Woo, steering's tight. And stop. All right, well, we're in the paint booth and we're ready to get started, but before we do anything on the outside of the car, we're gonna take care of a couple things on the inside. We're gonna put a few coats of paint on the roll cage. Obviously, it's in bare metal, so we have to do something to protect it. And then we're gonna take care of some of the bigger areas on the inside and also make it look a little bit nicer. And then we will finally get to the outside. Perfect, I'm gonna take the seat out. Now. All right, I'll get some paint. To prep the areas that have surface rust, we'll use a bristle disc to clean it up and it'll be ready for paint. While Jimmy's prepping inside, I'll mask off the windows and some parts outside. You know, it's kind of like wrapping a present, but I was never any good at that either. So it was just very, very crude. Nah, that'll work. Then we'll wipe down the roll cage with some acetone and lay down three coats of paint. The inside of the Miata is all done. Now it's time to move on to the outside. We're really painting this car for two main reasons. One is we want to give it a different look. And two, it's to do with taking care of this faded out clear coat. Now clear coat serves two main purposes. One is to make your car look shiny, but the second more important one is to add a layer of UV protection on top of your paint. Now after years of this thing sitting in the sun and having a lot of abuse, the clear coat has really started to chip and peel off the top of the car. Now when we go to lay our new paint on here, we gotta find a way to make sure this blends out really well. So an easy way to get started with that is just to use some compressed air. Then we'll come back with our sanders, we'll hit the deck lid and the rest of the car, we'll blend all of this out. All right, well now it's time to start sanding. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the front. Jimmy's gonna take care of a couple things in the back and make our life a little bit easier. We'll take off a few things to make masking off the car a little bit easier. To prep our paint, we'll be using a DA. We'll start with 320 grit and slowly work our way up to somewhere around 600 grit. All right, well the car is basically prepped, so now we're gonna roll this thing into the paint booth before we mask it off because we gotta be able to get to the steering wheel. 
and then we'll go ahead, give this thing a good wipe down, mask it off, and be one step closer to paint. It's so easy to roll, ain't it? Light car. Yeah, light car. Tiny car. All that's left to do is paint. We start the transformation from street to race car. Hey guys, we're in the paint booth and we're getting ready to lay down some color on the spec Miata, but there's a couple things that we have to do first. One of those things is wipe the car down really good with some wax and grease remover, and then we're gonna move on to some masking. And all this prep work is really what's gonna make the paint job look great, and I can't wait to see what this thing transforms into. All right, let's get started. We'll wipe the car down with some Summit Racing Wax and Grease Remover and then move on to masking. Jim, you want to know a little trick here? Since we don't have seals in our doors because it's a race car, you don't want paint to get inside. Yeah. Wad up a little bit of paper. We'll throw it in the jam area. And when we shut the door, it makes its own little seal. That's pretty smart. Yeah. We got taught that in school. Just like that. Nice. Tuck the corners in. I'll do that over here in a second. Yeah. We've got the Miata all masked off now and Jeremy's giving it one last wipe down. So the first step here is to lay down some primer sealer. And for that, we're going with Summit Racing's white. This is a pretty obvious choice because the car is gonna be painted white. We'll mix it with some of their hardener and then we'll get shooting on this thing. With the car eventually being painted white, I'll only do a couple light coats here and we'll have no problem getting the coverage we need. All right, well, Jimmy has a sealer all laid down and it's time to move on to paint. We're gonna be spraying Summit Racing's single stage bright white. Now the best part about this is it has the UV protection or the clear coat built directly into the paint. So if we get a little bit of body damage when we're out on the track, it's not a big deal. We just have to prep the surface and then lay this down versus laying down a base coat and then a clear coat. This mix is pretty simple, it's four to one. So we'll just mix them up, head into the booth, we'll lay down two wet coats and we'll be all set. It may be a little challenging to lay down white paint over white sealer because it's hard to see your wet edge. But make sure you have the correct overlap so you can get a nice, smooth finish. And after we give the first coat enough time to flash, we'll lay down our second coat. You know, I like it. I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, quick and easy. Uh, this thing doesn't have to be crazy nice because over its lifetime, it's gonna get beat up anyway, so. Right, it is a race car, and you yeah. know what they say about race cars. Rubbin's race. You got that right. Yeah. Uh, I think from here, then we'll unmask. Yeah. We'll go ahead and throw the old wheels and tires on it. Then we'll bring it down to the studio, mount the new wheels and tires, and then we still gotta wrap up the whole interior, so. Yeah, we're getting close. A little cut here and a tuck there, and we're almost ready to hit the track. All 
The car looks great and we have it back in our shop now. At this point, we just have to wrap up some interior stuff. I'm gonna be working on the door panels, one of which I do have to modify. And Jeremy, you're gonna take care of the dash. Yeah, we'll get it in there somehow. Sweet, let's get started. For the passenger side, it's pretty straightforward because the door bars just go straight forward from the main hoop. So as I get this in here, the door will be able to close just like that, but on the driver's side, we do have to modify it a little bit. This side is a little bit different because of how the roll cage is designed. The door bars on this side actually protrude out into the door area instead of going just straight forward like we have on the passenger side. And in the Spec Miata rule book, if you have the cage designed this way, you can modify any interior panels accordingly because of course, safety is first, looks are second. So from the looks of it, if we set this in here, um, I already know where the handle sits, so I'm thinking I'm just going to have to cut the door panel just under the handle. And I'll start by taking this handle off, and then we'll just cut it with the body saw. There you go. Easy as that. All right. I'll lay out some tape to make a nice line to follow with the body saw. All right, install this thing for good. push pin. With the door panels in, now we're gonna move on to the dash. Now we've already modified this to fit around the roll cage, so all we have to do is get this in, we'll bolt it up, and then hook up a couple connections. All we have to do is just slide the big plastic piece over here. Turn it around the cage. And get it in there somehow. And bolt it all down. Well, now that we have the interior all buttoned up, it's time to focus on the exterior. Now, before we put any parts on that car, especially these headlights, we're gonna restore them with a headlight restoration kit that we got from Sonex. Pretty simple to use, involves some sanding, and then a little bit of polishing, and then we'll get them right back on the car. This first step is a thousand grit, then from here, we go to 2000 and then all we do is just polish it out with their wool pad they provide in the kit. All right, that should take care of the 1000 grit and then we'll jump onto the 2000 here. Right, let's spray these down quick again. a little wipe down and we'll go ahead and start polishing. So the last thing we'll do is apply some of this headlight protection, spray it on the rig, and we'll go ahead and just wipe it on the headlight. Then we just have to let this dry. So while that's drying, go ahead and get started on the second side. 
To finish off the outside of our Miata, we have a new wheel and tire combination that we got from Summit Racing. The wheels are Koenig 15x7s along with Toyo Proxy's RRs in 205-5015. Those sizes are specific to the Spec Miata class, so we can't deviate from that at all. And because this is a DOT competition specific tire, they're going to be a lot more predictable and consistent when we're out on the track. And it'll be quite a bit different experience than what we had last time with just street tires on it. And not only that, but these look about 10 million times better, so that's a big plus too. This thing looks like a real race car now. Yeah, it looks cool, man. The wheels and tires really changed it up and it sits lower too, so. Yeah, I think the whole package together should uh, turn out to be a blast out on the racetrack. Yeah, I can't wait to drive it. I'll go get the truck and trailer. Let's load this up and let's just get out of here. Yeah, let's do it. Coming up, we take our spec Miata for a little rip around the race course. All right, guys, well, it's track day. It's the day that Jimmy and I have been waiting for. We have the Miata back up here at NCM Motorsports Park, and we're ready to take a couple laps and see how this car handles. Yeah, we built this thing for spec Miata. This thing's pretty set up, and you're the guy that drove this last time, so I'm curious what your feedback's gonna be, how much better the car is now, because it should be a lot stiffer with the cage, and also we got sticky tires and suspension on it, so. Right, it's a little cooler today, but I yeah. think we'll be able to set some pretty quickish times. We'll see what happens, so I'm gonna hop in, we'll go take it for a couple laps. Yeah, do it. If I can get in this thing. <sighs> wow, this thing's way quicker than it was before. So I just pulled back onto the track for the first time since we got this whole thing done. And I can tell you one thing right now, this car is way faster than it was before. And you know, it's got a, something to do with the horsepower because we gained a little. But just with the cage and everything, the car's stiffer. It's got a, a tighter feeling to it. You know, the coilovers I'm sure helped big time. And, um, We've got sticky tires on. Granted, they're not warmed up yet. And I'm not going crazy fast. I'm just trying to warm my tires up right now and remember the track because it's been a while since we've been out here. But the car is a completely different car. I can see how with a good setup on a car, this could get pretty addicting. Like <laughs> this car hugs way different than before. <laughs> and this thing's amazing. Like crazy fast right now. It's hard to tell how he's doing from up here, but the car looks really good. Like way better than it used to. Just the nice white, the cage and everything. It just looks like a true race car and that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, I could have a whole lot of fun in this car. This thing handles great and it's quick. It's got a lot of pickup off the line. You know, we had real big tires on it before when we bought it had big oversized tires bigger than stock and we've gotten down to a smaller tire size we got sticky tires on it now and this thing's crazy like wicked fast so i gotta be careful because <laughs> it's been a while since i've been on the track so i definitely don't want to push myself too hard but it sticks it absolutely sticks in the corners like this thing is a blast and the feeling you have the seat itself gives you that comfort it allows you to almost throw yourself around. Like I'm not moving in the cab, but you could almost throw yourself around in here because you're not moving all that much. You gotta just hold the lines. These tires are crazy good. They just stick like there's nobody's business. But I love it, like the car sounds good. It's holding together nicely. The steering wheel's in the perfect position. The brakes are awesome. The car's fast, like the car's really fast. Like a lot of fun, a whole lot of fun. And really the amount of work that we put into it, I mean, the car was relatively inexpensive when we bought it. I mean, we paid some good money for it, but 
it wasn't like going out and buying a $50,000 car that you have to now turn into a race car. It's buying a $6,000 car, diving decent money into it, but safety's huge. So like the cage, the coilovers, tires, we gained some horsepower, did some good brakes, and I've got a race car. I think that could hang with some pretty wicked built race cars. They don't weigh anything. Power to weight ratio is nuts on this car. And it's just fast. Just a fast car. So yeah, I'm gonna make myself car sick if anything. This thing's fun. That's 80. Yeah, this thing's an absolute ball to drive. I could do this all day. All right, dude, you look fast, but how was it? Dude, dare I say, this is probably the most fun I've had in a race car. Really? Yeah, right. uh, I totally want you to feel this for yourself, so I'm not gonna divulge too much information. I want you to hop in here, and I'm gonna go up in the crow's nest here and watch you do a couple of All laps. right, sweet deal. Nice. If you like anything you've seen on today's show, be sure to check out more of Power Nation TV.